If you've been following chronologically through the lessons in this chapter, in the previous lesson we did something called a zoomify to this image. It's the same image from the last lesson. That's a neat thing to do, I guess. But I don't want to zoomify. I just want to put this on my website. I like it. It's a nice snowy evening, and I think people would appreciate the image. I want it on my website just as a plain old image. Now, there are a few things that we need to do here. Although if you go to the word file on the pull down menu, you do have an option for save for web, there are some things we need to do before we get there. So let's start by looking at this image in terms of a couple of things. Number one, if we are going out to the internet, this image should be RGB because that's what the internet basically is. It may not be 100 years from today, but it is now. It is RGB. We've got it at RGB. Number two, it really needs to be 8 bit, not 16. Earlier, we talked about that 16 bit thing, and that's good to work in, but not for the web. So make sure you're at RGB and at 8 bits. If that's true, Scroll all the way down here to image size. In image size, I see that the resolution of this image is 300. Now, we've been raised to believe that 72 is the magic number for the internet. And that's true, but it's not really necessary to change it here. This stuff is for documents, this stuff is for the internet. We live and die on the internet by measuring things in what? Pixels. 600 by 800, 1024 by 768. Those aren't centimeters, those are pixels. So what do we do? Well, number one, we need to turn this on. Resample the image. Forget what's going on down here. Worry about these numbers. If you're a web designer, you are more than aware of sizing things based on pixels. I need the width of this one to be about 600. Or I shouldn't say about, I need it to be 600. Since we're constraining proportions, we've got no problem there. Change this number to 600. 600 by 400. Let's say that's what you did because you designed it, you mapped it out, and that's the size you need. Forget this number down here. It doesn't matter. If you're going out to print, it does. This is what matters. Now, before you click OK, and this is important, if you come over to buy cubic right here, a lot of people forget this one. We have options. And what we want is by cubic sharper, best for reduction. Make sure you select that. Then you come up here to the word OK and click. Now I know it looks small. Let's double click on the zoom tool. That's how big it would be exactly if it were on a monitor in an HTML document and the monitor was the same resolution as the one I'm using right now. And we're happy with that, but we're not done yet, are we? Let's go up to the word file on the pull down menu and go down to Save for Web. What you are looking at is the amazing Save for Web dialog box that has been in Adobe Photoshop since version 5.5. Now, I'm not talking about CS 5.5, which was the last version out. I'm talking about Photoshop without the CS 5.5, which was probably 10 years ago. I do like it. It works great. It allows me to take an image and do what? Convert it into oh, an HTML page document, PowerPoint document, anything I want. You've got a lot of options. We are in the 4-up right now. You've got a 2-up, an optimized original 4-up. 4-up, I like this one if I can afford to have smaller areas. This one over here is the original. We're running it at 703K. Now, the first one, actually, they're all three right now, JPEGs. And if you are working to the internet, it's probably the format you're going to use. This one is at 100% quality, 251K. And that's not too bad. That's taken it down. This one's at 50% qualities. With JPEGs, it's about the quality number. 36K, one second download. And this one's at 18.65K. It's at 25% quality. Again, one, it's about as low as you're going to get one second download. Now, what does that pertain to on the web? We have a rule on the internet called the eight second rule. The eight second rule says that your home page, your landing page, needs to load within eight seconds or I'm probably going to go someplace else. We're gerbils on caffeine. You know, we don't want to wait for anything. So what I'm looking for when I'm designing an image that's going to be a JPEG and it's going on the internet, I'm asking myself this question. How much quality am I willing to sacrifice? to get the speed I need to get it to load. You say, well, man, this one's great. 
Now, it might be hard for you to see this on your video, but you do have this particular image, and you can do the same thing I'm doing. And if you look closely at it, this one, in terms of quality, is not as good as this one. This is only at 25%. This is at 100. Are you willing to sacrifice four seconds out of your eight just to load that one photograph? It's up to you. That's a lot of time for one photo. This one doesn't look that bad to me. And I might be willing to take that down with some of the quality issues, which aren't many, and get a one second download. I got more time for other things on that web page. Because remember, this is only one piece of a web page, it's not the whole thing. You say, well, how'd you get this number here? If you click here, you get download times. Now, this is based on research. What's your area? What's your bandwidth? Now, I'm running typically about DSL at 768. That's the average in my neighborhood. But you could be doing a T1 at 1.5 MIP. It's up to you. If you're working on an intranet, that's kind of cool because you know exactly what everybody's speed is. You change the number here. You look at the number. You make an informed decision. But that's not all. If you come over here and choose one of these, you can change the format of the document. For example, you could take it into a PNG 24, which would be ideal for PowerPoint. Now, the image will be beautiful, as good as the original. It's only down about 60%, 703 to 410, six seconds. But if I'm using this in PowerPoint and I'm running it off my hard drive, I don't care. 410 is nothing. The images will be good, I suggest, if you're doing Microsoft PowerPoints. Not bad to do it that way. But if we come down here, you'll notice these options change based on what format you're using. We could try GIF. I wouldn't, but we could. And it really starts getting cool down here. It's almost like a painting. Whole idea, though, is what image do you want? If you're working on the Internet and you want to use an image that's a photograph, then you're probably going to choose the JPEG format. So let's go back to this one and change that one back to JPEG. And let's do this one too. All JPEGs. Now, if we go to this one, which is at 25%, we can change this number to 50. And let's do the same thing to this one. So they're all the same thing right now. You have other options. Number one, you can change the image into what is called progressive. Now, you'll notice that lowers down the size, not by much, but it does. Progressive loads an image kind of like in lines, every third line, every third line, every third line. It is a way to make an image begin to appear faster and then kind of clear as the viewer is watching it. But it isn't really supported by some of the older browsers. So if you turn that one off, you do get optimized. Now, if I turn that off, the image goes up by about 2K. Now again, optimized obviously is a good thing, but a lot of the older browsers don't support it. So if we put this one, let's put this one at progressive. Let's put this one at unoptimized. And let's look at this one. So we've got a 3641, a 3839, and a 3673. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, when I'm working on these images, I'm crunching every tenth of a K I can get out of it because I want to make sure, what? That it's going to load and I'm in control. So what's left? Well, you could embed the color profile. Now, if you watch this one down here, we're at 3673. If I turn that off, it goes down about three quarters of a K. What is that? Well, it's the color profile. We talked about that. Browsers today read the color profile, which means what? Well, this is cool. It means that if you're working on a Mac or Windows system and you're worried about that gamma change between Mac and Windows and you have embedded the color profile and the browser can read it, what's well, going to kind of fix that up for you? To me, that might be worth a half a K to make that happen. You've got previews for different monitors, legacy, whatever you want to see. You can include metadata. Now, we talked about metadata in an earlier chapter, but you could do things like copyright material. If you want to put that in, you can. If you convert the image into, say, let's go back to this one real quick and convert that into a GIF, we get a color table here. And the more colors you add, the bigger the file, but the better the image. Now, we're up to 183 again, so that's unacceptable. But we can work with the colors here. We can change the size right here. 600 by 400, that's unacceptable. Change it right here. We don't have to go back to Photoshop anymore. If you do change the image size here, or use a percentile. Make sure that you change this, say for example, to 
by cubic sharper if you're going down or by cubic smoother if you're going up. So you have a lot of additional options here that can really help you make that decision. Once you make a choice, let's say we like that one right there in the upper right. Well, the only other thing is to click save and actually save the image. However, if you like what you did up here, before you click the save button down here, you can click here and tell the computer to save these settings. My personal settings. I have fun names, don't I? It will go into a folder. It's important you leave it there and click save. The next time you need them, they would be under this list right here. So it's not bad to know you can do that. Now down here, you'll notice the word saves kind of cut off. Photoshop doesn't really like it that much, so it's a little bit cut off at the bottom, but we can still get to it. Click save. Give it a good name. Put it wherever you want to. Click save, and you got it. Working in Save for Web is an excellent way to prep an image, not just for the web, but for PowerPoint and a whole lot of other things too. On to the next.